Greetings, ladies and men gents, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series Humans Don't Make Good Familiars. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Book 2, Chapter 37 Jake's Point of View Looking around at all the dead Niema, I started to feel nauseous. I quickly picked myself up off the ground and ran away from the cottage. After making it about 20 feet, however, I was suddenly racked with exhaustion and soreness. My face was back in the sand before I knew what happened. Zuma! Zuma, are you there? I said weakly. Jake, is that you? The real you? She said over our private connection. What's going on? I'm in a desert and everyone's dead. You are in the wasteland, but I saw you disappear. Do you remember what happened? The dragon. He took my body. Oh, my. Did he? D did I? Looking back at the bodies, my stomach tightened and I suddenly threw up. Jake, are you okay? Suma shouted. No. Can you summon me? I really don't want to be here, I said, looking away from the dead Niema, but still too weak to move. I was lying on my back, looking up at the bright pink sky with dull orange clouds hanging above me. I do not think that is a good idea at the moment. Do you really not know what happened? She asked, sounding very worried. I couldn't bring myself to look at the bodies again, but they still appeared in my mind nonetheless. Did I? He? Kill those people? Most of them, yes. Jake, tell me what you know. I spent the next few minutes connecting myself and telling Suma what happened from my point of view. After that, she told me what the dragon did with my body. She did not go into much detail, but she didn't have to. I'd gotten pretty good luck at the aftermath. The dragon, nature, was brutal. Can you get me out of here now? There's something wrong with my body. It's as if I just went through ten rounds of your healing, followed by ten rounds of heavyweight boxer. I still do not think it's a good idea, Jake. The city guards want you arrested. Do you feel as if you need medical treatment? If so, I'll summon you immediately. At that moment, I felt lightheaded, and despite remaining motionless, everything started to spin. I heard distorted voices, like they were underwater. They were slowly surfacing and growing clearer. I don't... I, I don't feel... Jake, Jake! Suma shouted. With that, everything went dark. I expected to pass out, but instead, for a moment, it felt like I was waking up. My eyes opened, and I looked around. The only thing was, I wasn't the one who opened them, and I wasn't the one looking around. After what just happened, I started to panic, thinking maybe that the dragon had taken control of my body again. But it didn't feel anything like that. Instead, it felt more like I was dreaming. I'm hallucinating again. Now, I thought, emotions and thoughts started flowing like a river, as if I was the one actually thinking them, except... I knew it was me. It was a memory of some kind. I'm going to get such a sunburn, I thought. I would have shaken my head, but I didn't have one at that moment. The memory started with darkness, like a summoning spell. When my eyesight came back, there was a bird standing on the ground looking up at me. Did he say how long he was going to be? The person, who was probably Zachariah, asked the Niema. He will arrive shortly, I... I do ask you be on your best behavior. This is not like our meetings at the royal court or even the king. Ashim is a close friend of mine and a very important figure to the dragons. Please be courteous. The Niemma, who was probably Amboss, said. I'll be nice, probably Zachariah said. Thank you. Did your experiments with magic in your world go well? Probably Amboss asked. No, doesn't work there. At least not like it does here. Perhaps if you improve your skill with it here, it'll become easier there. I don't know. Maybe. Probably Zachariah's head turned to the side, and he looked around for a moment after hearing an odd noise. Do you hear that? Hear what? It sounds like something shaking a cloak out. Probably Amboss looked around for a moment, then nodded his head while looking off into the horizon. Ah, yes. Here he comes now. He should not be much longer. I guess that is your people's amazing sight. As strong as you are magic is, Zachariah, I still do not understand how a species could possibly get by with such poor eyesight. Zachariah, I knew it, I thought. Axes and bows, Zachariah answered mockingly. Less than a minute later, the source of the strange noise became visible. It was two dragons, and the noise was one of their wing beats. They were both massive, but one was colossal, a dozen of times larger than the horse-sized drake I fought. It was an eastern-style dragon with serpent-like body, long whiskers that made up a kind of beard shape. Four legs with claws at the end, kind of like a cat, and a row of short fins down its back. I don't know how it was flying, probably magic, 
because it actually didn't have any wings. The smaller one was about two-thirds the size of the bigger one, and was a stereotypical western-style dragon. It had four legs, huge wings, a long neck, a horned head, and a long tail. It looked more bestial in nature, where the larger one looked more refined. My Valhalla, Zachariah said once he realized how huge they were. Dang, that's big, I thought, just as amazed as he was. When the two dragons landed, the winged one kicked up dust storm and landed with a thud, while the wingless one slowly spiraled down until it landed fairly gently. Greetings, Ashim, and greetings to you as well, Deja, the Niyama said. Hello, Ambos. It is good to see you again, and you must be Zachariah. I have heard so much about you from Ambos, the larger eastern-style dragon said, and lowered his massive head down closer to us. Greetings, Ashim. It is a pleasure to meet you both, Zachariah said. I did not realize that Ajo would be joining us today, but another dragon is always welcome, Amboss said. The smaller western dragon did not lower his head down to Amboss's or Zachariah's level, but he did speak. I was told your familiar had an impressive amount of negative aether. I was intrigued and asked Asher for permission to join him today. Deja was watching me, or Zachariah, very closely. His voice was raspy and shrill. It was definitely not what I expected to come out of such a powerful-looking body. I, I do, but I'm afraid I've got no talent for it, Zachariah said. Deja cocked his head and lowered it down closer to Zachariah's. Talent is overrated. I have always preferred skill gain through <laughs> practical application. You are the only other being I have met with the ability to use negative aether. My name is Deja. It is a pleasure to meet you. End of chapter. Book 2, Chapter 38, Jake's Point of View. Without warning, the area around me in the dream shifted like a heat haze over pavement, and I became aware of the passage of time. I somehow knew nearly a year had passed, maybe longer. Now we were in a coliseum of sorts, and Deja's darkly scaled head hung over and behind me, watching as Zachariah performed his spell. A small purple fire formed on the ground in front of Zachariah, as the two looked on. You are improving. Your speed increases with each lesson. But let us see if it was successful, Deja said, and formed a ball of water with his own magic. He floated it into the fire, left it for a moment, then slowly brought it out again. I expected it to be smaller, but instead it had grown in size and was completely frozen solid. Excellent work. I say you've mastered this technique. Your understanding of negative aether is impressive for only studying it for a single year, and it only took you a matter of months to learn the inversion method unique to negative mages. A student is as only as good as his teacher. Thank you, Deja, Zachariah said. Deja dropped the ball of ice to the ground, shattering it to pieces. The purple flames that Zachariah had been controlling slowly died down, turning a normal orange and yellow, until finally stuffing itself out. Zachariah, may I ask you a question? Deja asked, laying on the ground in front of Zachariah. In a way, he looked like a lion on the savannah in some old documentary or Disney movie. Despite laying down, his head still towered over me, or Zachariah, technically. What weighs in your mind? Zachariah asked, looking up at the dragon's head. What is your opinion of Ashim? It reminds me of my Yarl, Sten, the leader of my people, Clan Harufram Bjorn. In what way? He is a dragon of heavy words and mighty ideals, but not one of swift action. Deja nodded his head. I find myself agreeing with that. But you didn't ask me because you wanted to hear my opinion, Zacharias said, putting his hands on his axe hilts, which hung on his hips. Did I not? Deja said, cocking his head. No, you asked me because you wanted to tell me your opinion of him. Deja chuckled. <laughs> Perhaps I did. So what is your opinion of Ashim? Deja inhaled deeply. He is too sentimental. It has held us back. In what way? Our people should have left this world centuries ago, but Ashim's sentimentality for these uh, Nyama has kept us here. Is it wrong to love this place, these people? This land is full of life. Why leave? It is not wrong to love life, but... Deja swung his massive head to the side and looked at the mountains in the distance. I would hardly call this place alive. I'm afraid I don't understand. 
What do you mean? This world. It has grass and trees and beings to eat them, but they are mere facsimiles of life. Zachariah looked around. It all looks real enough to me. Tell me, Zachariah, do your people have the ability to sense Aether? Deja asked, looking down at Zachariah. No, although I am aware it is possible for the Niamma. We dragons are also able to sense the Aether. Far more than them, and this world feels like the driest of deserts to me. Deja moved his head closer to Zachariah. You, you are alive, Aetha. It pours off of you, like it should pour off of all truly living beings. The Niyama, however, they are like wisps, or bones left to dry out in the arid sands. The world you come from, Zachariah, it must have been so full of Aether, so full of beauty. Aye, it was beautiful, but I had never seen magic like this world as while I was there, Zachariah said. And to me, this world just looks as majestic. Deja snorted in response. You should have seen this world when we first found it. It was a barren wasteland. We made it what it is today. If you made this world, then why do you hate it? I do not hate it. I feel no more for it than I would feel for one of the axes you craft. This world was an interesting experiment. But it is one that should have ended by now. If you feel so strongly, then why not speak to Asham? Surely he would hear you, Zachariah said. He would let me go. I am no one's captive here. However, he and all those loyal to him would stay, which would be most of the dragons. Are there no more dragons, are there? There are. But just as you have your clan, I have mine. So, you do not wish to leave your people, but you can't stay here any longer. Why not take the others who feel the same as you do and go home? Wait for the rest of your people to join you there. If we go home without Asham, we may never find our way there. Only Asham knows the way. Ah, I see, Zachariah said. As I watched this conversation, the haze reformed around me, and the memory shifted away again. Dang it, I thought. That was getting interesting. When the haze finally disappeared, I was in a new memory, and I think I was several years in the future from the last one. It was dark, and I could smell the sea. I was in a wooden room, slowly moving up and down. Am I in a boat? Zachariah was lying on a mat on the floor, but eventually he stood up and walked outside. There was no door. Instead, there was simply a circular opening large enough for a Niyama to fly through. But for Zachariah, it was a bit of a squeeze. Leaving the sleeping Niyama, Zachariah went to the top deck of the ship. I hadn't heard it before, but as we got closer to the deck, I heard the sounds of rain. I readied myself to get wet. But it was pointless. The rain wasn't hitting the ship. Small glowing runes on the floor were projecting a bubble that deflected the rain. Inside that bubble, Niyama flew around hurriedly, each to do some task. Zachariah, what are you still doing up? Couldn't sleep? A voice from above him called out. He turned and saw that it was Amboss, who softly landed on a pile of wooden boards left on the deck. I'm afraid not. My mind is racing with what's ahead, Zachariah said, leaning over the side of the ship. He stuck his hand outside the barrier and let the cold rain fall over his arm. Ashim, dead. It almost seems impossible. I do not wish to believe it myself, but the messenger was clear. Why would Deja do this? I know he and Ashim held their differences, but to kill one Yal, his friend, I do not understand. Of all the dragons, Deja is the most uh, incomprehensible. I feel as if this were somehow my fault, that if I'd given him better advice or... Uh, I do not know. Deja's actions, while villainous, were his own. You supported him as best you could. You must not take responsibility for his deeds. My mind knows this, but my heart does not believe it. Zachariah shook his head and pulled his hand back from the rain. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons. Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catull, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster 177. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.